War Games! War Games! Yeah, it's War Games! Or in AEW land, Blood and Guts! Though, a, though WWE is still PG content, so uh, blood and guts is out of the question for these kinds of matches in uh, WWE. So it's the uh, War Games, or if someone wanted to really push it, let's call it what it is. It's Impact's uh, Lethal Lockdown match. With all the uh, weapons they tend to bring into every War Games match, both in Blood and Guts and in War and in the WWE War Games, we probably never get a full-fledged Dusty Rhodes War Games unless Cody says something. But yeah, let's talk about the second one, not the first one. I'll talk about the second one. I'll talk about the first one later down the road. Uh, the big main event: the Bloodline versus the Brawling Brutes. And there were there were layers and continuity to these stories. Layers such as Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns and well, his recent interactions with the Brawling Brutes with the Bloodline. We got the Usos with the Brawling Brutes feud, Sami Zayn's relationship with Kevin Owens, along with Roman Reigns' history with Kevin Owens, and so was Sakai. He screwed McIntyre, let's go with that. Uh, so everyone in this show has a story with the other month to a year or so. So this is like, this is like a culmination piece of sorts to like resolve several storylines and ultimately, you know, make Roman be God essentially. Because let's be real, who was heading into this event thinking Roman was going to lose this match? They're saving the big loss for him and the pinfall defeat either at WrestleMania next year or probably never. If WWE really wanted to insult people's intelligence like that. Uh, and now I'm pretty certain at the Royal Rumble we're going to get Roman Reigns versus Sheamus. I, I wouldn't be doubting that at this point considering the hot streak re rejuvenation period Sheamus has been on. And the Brawling Brutes will fight uh, the Usos. Sami Zayn's loyalty, who went from Sam Uso. Ah, uh, Sammy, you are a national comedic treasure and no one can replace that. Now that I think about it, I wonder if the Elite would love to have Sam if the Elite would have loved to have Sami Zayn on this show. That would have been fun. That would have made things more funnier. Though. Let's be real. We need some comedy in WWE. Like he, like Sammy has been on a wild path with his comedic highlights. For what was originally just going to be a filler storyline and just end it and, and and be like whoa ha ha thing. Instead, because Sami Zayn made it so popular, got it so well, as Paul even described as the guest star that was going to come in for like a one to two three episode deal. Only to get so popular, they say, damn it, we need him for the main cast. And long and behold, Sammy has become part of the main cast. Hey, he's gotten so over with the fans that even people in Saudi Arabia were cheering, were saying, we want Sammy, Sammy Uso, we want Sammy, Sammy Uso. And when you hear that, your first instinct is to be worried how the Saudi government's gonna handle all those people who said the blasphemous Syrian name. But um, the second one is, wow, Sammy is just that damn popular that even people will defy the will of their own government to go ahead and cheer for him. Props. So if you want to donate for Sammy for Syria, he'll post links on his Twitter occasionally still. Ah, Sammy. And to the point that Solo Sakai, the Usos, and Roman, and Paul Heyman, they were like, <laughs> God, this guy's so funny. Like, they broke character on TV, and they were having this massive hard time to try and hide it, to hide the laugh, like, to recover their mouths, like, trying to look like they're... <sighs> I mean, like... Like even reportedly back then, Vince was like, "Don't laugh unless you're unless you can able able to keep it in character." 
which if Vince was still working in WWE and he was handling the Sammy Roman stuff, yeah, I'm pretty sure he would have ordered Sammy to stop now. Stop being funny unless it's toilet gross humor. But yeah, Sammy has gotten so over with the crowd and he's become more of an essential pillar to this group and rejuvenated the bloodline from being just Roman's bodyguards who have layers. They have more layers. Like even like the most serious solo Sokoa has been like, yeah. But then Kevin Owens came back, hooray! After especially when he looked like he was gonna get injured, it looked like he was hurt again, Ooh. only to return to confirm that he's still healthy enough Ooh. Thus creating the dissension we've been seeing between Sami Zayn and Jey Uso specifically because Jey Uso looks at Sami much like how Randy Orton looks at legends who he doesn't looks at supernatural entities and sets them on fire. Or we could go more referential humor and say how how uh, Jey Uso looks at like, how Jey Uso looks at Sami like Matt Damon's uh, Matt Smith's. Uh, Damon Targaryen looks at the messenger in, ep in one of the episodes where he just starts beating him down with a helmet. <sighs> and I get, and, and this is an interesting layer they gave to that because since J, since J Uso suffered a psych, a, an abuse from Roman in, throughout this entire run he's had, and seeing Roman not even abusing Sammy and instead treating him somewhat more favorably makes J Uso go like, Son of a bitch. And secretly looking like he was gonna try he's trying his damnest to go, I shall murder you. And I'll do it slowly and quickly and painfully. To the point where just when it looked like they were gonna have Roman and the bloodline turn on Sammy and by having and Jay used to look excited like, are we gonna do it? What? To the point he ripped Sammy's uh bloodline shirt off. To the point till he found out that Roman declared he would be an honorary Ooze. And Jay Uso had the look of like, my world has shattered. <laughs> so um yeah, and Jimmy Uso is Okay, let's be real. He's just the tag team guy because let's be real. If Jimmy Uso is given a more prevalent position on the card and he has another DUI incident, I'm pretty sure that he's going to be like, nope, we're going to just ignore him. He's just more like, like, well, I saw Sokoa be more over than him. Like, Jimmy still has his moments, like the handshake with Sammy, but like, nothing that makes you say he has his own definitive character other than just being like the because he's always making the facial expressions of, oh damn. Whereas Jey Uso is being the angry, bitter, abused victim who's now lashing out on Sami Zayn thinking that's the same way because Roman did it to him and he's lashing out on someone he thinks is weaker only to see that the guy who ruined him, who abused him is treating that guy more favorably to the point that he willingly and angrily decreed, even when Sam was trying to make peace, say, man, I don't even tell you what the trouble chiefs say. And prompting Roman to um, snap his head up and look like he was gonna freaking murder him. Even WWE came up with that, even WWE went on that joke and, and, and like, like went ahead and even posted a clip of Roman beating down Jey Uso from all the way back when Ro Roman was first turned heel, finally, and just to imply that Roman was definitely thinking that. And then we got the build up with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn's friendship, rivalry, best friend, bitter enemies, history. We had all this, and Kevin Owens is trying to encourage Sami to betray the bloodline and not the other way around. And. Sammy was just listening to him and just seemingly gawking at him while Jey Uso was like, mm, this is my plan, this is my chance. And reports it to Roman like a genuine kiss ass. I'm pretty certain we got Hulk Hogan inspired when he screwed Jesse Ventura's plan to unite the industry. But, uh, but whereas Vince was fully on board with destroying that optimistic plan, 
romance like i want to hear his side of the story then i'll make my decision and long and behold stanley explained the whole detail to him after lying to jay uso about it he told the truth and said look he came to me he talked to me told me to stab you guys in the back before you stab me in the back i didn't speak to him i just gawked at him and looked at him and i didn't answer i am totally 100 percent on your side and I am forever grateful for what you have given me, this career research is essentially. Which is why it's gonna be tragic when the day comes when Sammy gets up, picks up his car, picks up his a cardboard and holds it and says, a clipboard says, how come my name's on the list? And then they get he's then he gets his ass beat. And I've been talking about the build-up this whole time. And the golden treasure trove of comedy that Sami Zayn represents for all of us. Such as feeling very oozy. Which, if you look it up on um, dictionaries and whatnot, it actually has a completely different meaning. And it makes it much funnier. Oh, god damn it. So, yeah. Heading into the match... We were getting, and Roman was once again vague in his evil plan or something like that to Jay say, I looked him right in his eyes and I knew where he stood. And he doesn't explain anything else. He just gives cryptic answers. It's sort of like he was looking at Jay and thinking Jay could understand. In fact, I honestly thought Sammy would be proven loyal and then Roman would kick out Jay at the end of the show. Which would have honestly been an interesting twist. That would have been an interesting swerve. Uh, but yeah. The match is what you expect from WWE's War Games match, as you would expect from a lethal lockdown match. There's no roof still. Pretty sure once Cody comes back and he can try and convince Triple H, can we do it again for next year? Because Vince is gone and we don't have to deal with his whininess. In fact, I'm still trying to wonder uh, how is Vince handling the whole this is now Survivor Series War Games. I'm pretty sure he's secretly pissed because WCW has now said, hey, uh, Vince, why is our creation being used on your main product? No! And then you can't do anything about it because his reputation has been completely decimated by the media, along with all the scandals that came out about him. But, uh, yeah, I honestly hope Vince is crying at home and sleep bitterly in his sleep commenting that Triple H didn't have much I hate my son-in-law damn it but enough about my delusional belief that Vince is a crazy 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 petty little child because sometimes he comes off that way um the match is everything you would expect from WWE's lockdown war games match and yeah it was awesome. It was freaking awesome. And the biggest story in there and the biggest show stealer on there was Sami Zayn, as you would expect, as his loyalty would be tested as he saved Jey Uso over and over. And then Jey Uso kicked him in the face and didn't even feel remorseful for it. Because, of course. And then... When Kevin Owens had the stunner on Roman Reigns and there was a full on pinfall, Sammy does the impossible and grabs the ref's arm to stop the count to three, much to Kevin Owens' anger, and trying to scream common sense to Sammy. And because commentary, because Corey Grace is no longer being chained by his neck by Vince, he can go ahead and proclaim uh, how many times has Kevin Owens stabbed everybody in the back? And I was like, Corey Grace, you are pointing out the painfully obvious that if Vince was running the show, he would not have me done that. And in fact, he'd probably punch you. So, yeah. They point this out that Kevin Owens has stabbed Sammy in the back multiple times, stabbed him in the back, stabbed Jericho in the back, stabbed, uh, let's see, Seth Rollins in the back. Though, really, it's Seth Rollins, so really, it was give or take on that one. And 
they keep pointing this continuity out, and the people are like saying, Sammy sold his soul to Roman Reigns. I mean, like, does Roman even have a track record of backstabbing people yet? Uh, what? So, yeah. So, yeah, Roman Reigns' his team gets the victory. The Bloodline wins. Yay. And Sami Zayn is hailed as a full on oos. Hail to the Uso. And Jay, finally. 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 Is acknowledged by Jay Uso. And now Roman Reigns shall take his leave until the middle of December, most likely, or probably January, and wait to Royal Rumble build. Probably with Sheamus. But uh, yeah, I would like to point this out. We're also running out of people to Roman to fight, and. Then, after Royal Rumble's over, he's reportedly not working at Elimination Chamber, according to updates, according to articles. So, he's out of that. So, is he work? So, if he's not in the Elimination Chamber, that raises a question. What the hell are we even going to have the Elimination Chamber for? We might as well just scrap it this next year. Instead, I suggest we have the impossible. The Rock returns to challenge Roman for the title, to challenge Roman at WrestleMania, to take on the who's the head of the table. But let's be real, I, I have two case scenarios about that. One, The Rock versus Roman on night one, versus, and Roman versus Cody on night two for the, for the title. And Cody finally dethrones Roman. Or if my if my worst case pessimistic scenario where they're trying to build Roman up as the legend of their generation, and with the recent report about Stone Cold, I would not be surprised if WWE said scrap the Cody plan. I would not be surprised if Triple H scrapped the Cody idea that fans want. And instead, said Roman versus Rock, Roman versus Austin, night one, night two, and he beats them both. He defeats the Attitude Era. Long live the Tribal Chief! And we are once again having to wait either eight months or about several months or a full year for someone to dethrone Roman again. <laughs> I'm not kidding when I think that's a possibility. But yeah, Sami Zayn is now a full fledged Uso! He is now acknowledged by the Tribal Chief. They hug it out. Jey Uso hugs it out, and they raise their fingers in the air to symbolize the celebration while Solo Sokoa is like, Why am I not doing this? <laughs> but yeah, I honestly thought Jay was going to turn on, on, be turned on by uh, Roman and the Bloodline. And, and like, they keep Sammy and they kick Jay out at the end of all this because Jay was being, you know, the bitter a hole the whole time. <laughs> I honestly thought for sure that was going to be a swerve that I would not have saw coming. <laughs> like, the twist would have been that interesting. I would not have saw that coming. Oh, God. Especially after that whole, um, Man, I'm give a damn what the travel chief say. You're a dead man, sir. It may not be tonight. Sammy may cover for you, but let's be real, it's, I give it a month. Uh, and Sami Zayn has that look of regret at first when he realizes he low blowed Kevin Owens and then gave him the Huluva kick. In fact, when was the last time I saw him use that finisher? I don't know. But uh, yeah, the bloodline reigns supreme in war games. And I know I haven't talked about Shame about the brawling brutes and whatnot and Team Sheamus and KO and Drew McIntyre. They did well. They, they did great, along with the 10 beats of the battle round going over to 50. Yeah. The reason why I'm not really talking about them, because let's be real, the story is Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in the bloodline, and really, we I, I'm pretty sure it's just them trying to say, okay, look, we already have the World Rumble plans, Sheamus versus Roman, and we could do the Brawling Bruce versus the Usos. 
and Kevin Owens could recover for a little bit. Drew McIntyre... Well, we kind of threw out your coronation moment at Clash of the Castle, so you're just kind of here for filler parts. Yeah, that's Saffordier, huh? But, uh, yeah. So, so, yeah. We're, we're this, this was a phenomenal match. The storytelling was phenomenal. Phenomenal! And... Let's be real, if they had no other matches on the show save for just the women's war games and Miz, I would have said this was a complete success. Uh, and then you have to remember that Ronda Rousey was fighting Sunsy Blackheart in a match that uh, legitimately sucked. That should tell you that even the WWE tribalists were calling out, calling out, uh, Ronda and Chelsea's match and say they need to they need to go to the performance center and yada 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 or just Ronda but like okay uh, so this was Neo Reality Entertainment the rest of us presenting my collective thoughts on the bloodline versus the brawling brutes set war game survivor series Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out my other content in the description below to see for more, and I'll see y'all again next time. Peace and take care, and keep on wrestling. Peace.